What's up, everybody? It's your boy Showtime Doctor. We had a breakthrough. I think Celion saw my last video. Oh, by the way, Future Proof 4. Um, and decided to ping me in the official Discord, which the link's down below if you want to join it. And basically let me see what the first two stages of Tower of Adversity are like in-game PvP content and this week's challenges. So we're going to go through them. I'm off for my analysis. I understand a lot of what's going on, but I don't quite understand everything that's going on. And then also, as the video progresses, I adjust it, so it's going to be a bit bigger, but it takes some time. Let's see. Try to make it a bit louder. Okay, so this challenge is basically... That's alternate Ruiya, by the way. Um, you see those three... I think her name's Homa or Hazma. Whatever right there. Those are the big bosses. And what happens is... If you target them with AoE... It goes off like normal and everything's fine. If you target them with single target, they summon these pigs that you see all over here. And the pigs are actually pretty dang powerful. And Selan was telling me after this video that... Her team without Tyre, who you can see there, he's like the desert looking guy with the... Almost looks like a cane, but whatever's going on there. <laughs> he, he's, they said that uh, their team basically cannot tank all this damage without him. So he's like MVP in this fight, according to the Celion. Um, as you see there, there's Safiya's there. Coco's there. There's also the summon creep that Safiya put down. Gloria's there. Then alternate Rubia is the team that people actually, uh, that Selian's actually fighting with. I think this is the damage share. Not a thousand percent sure. So the gimmick to this match is, here comes the adjustment. Oh yeah, one more thing too. Uh, at some point in this video, I'm not sure if it's this one, because there's two fights, I'm gonna put them in two videos. Uh, someone hops in and is like, you know, doesn't mute their mic, and it takes me a second to mute them, so I'm, I apologize for that. They were speaking like whatever, some language I wasn't sure of. So there's Gloria, she's putting the flag down, does a good amount of AoE damage. That flag has a buff going on, and now what's normally her aura, since it's gone, and that the flag's down for, I think it's two turns, unless it gets destroyed. Uh, she now has like a cleave kind of AoE hit that she can do with that skill slot. So this is a lot like, for those of you that played MMOs, like say World of Warcraft, you know that a lot of times when you were fighting raid bosses in that game, no matter what era it was, they have near endless ads that you have to simultaneously control and get rid of. Or, uh, you know, basically keep occupied somehow, whether it's stun, trap, whatever it was. So that effect that went off, that powder, basically makes it so that range damage is going to miss. That's something you need to take advantage of, too, in some of the fights in the game. <laughs> I love how that minion just blows himself up. <laughs> Yeah, that's great. So eventually, as this fight goes on, they're going to work their way down. And of course, they're going to have to do some single target damage. Now, the way uh, Celan also clarified for me how the tower works with regard to the two paths that you can take. You actually need to bring 12 characters with you. So six are here, six are in the other part of the map. That's the, the lower or upper part. And you set up their gear, you set up their skills, and once you do that, it locks. You cannot mess with any of it. But there's no, like, you know, pre-gaming for certain things in a certain map. And there's two separate maps for each team that they can score in. The, uh, the extra effect there with, like, that bird that keeps getting summoned. 
that's a hosna or homa um, passive that goes off. The bird does a little extra damage. AoE. So you notice right there, no no more pigs get summoned there. Looks like that wolf is actually a uh, summon as well. Good use of the map effect there with the boulder. Don't have to worry about those three ads. I don't know what those scrolls do that are on the ground. That is one thing I should have asked. But oh well. Let's see what this gentleman's gonna do. This is Tyre for those wondering. Not sure what that one was. Some type of heal, maybe a buff. Coco? We had a funny thing going in the Discord yesterday where we were all treating Coco like she was the prophet. Is this a goofy thing we do in the Discord for fun? We're all going stir crazy waiting for this game to come out in global. Alright, so that looks like extra turn. So we're gonna get the AoE and we're gonna get some follow up. Follow up is a backstab. So because I was a single target, here comes another pig. You see that pig? Pig hits pretty good. Imagine there's like five of them on the map. Here comes another summon. So the cool things about the summons are they're going to take some of the damage, spread it around, because the pigs are going to go for them. So they're kind of like, there's like a rogue. Tyre apparently summons a couple of them. They do AoE, that's cool. I love that. I didn't notice that the last time. I was watching this live, but I didn't offer commentary because I didn't know exactly what was going on. So I wanted to ask questions and then go for it. It looks like the scroll did a heal. Maybe a buff possibly, and it also added an extra turn or at least extra movement. Oh, and they do follow-up attacks. That's amazing. Uh. So we're seeing Tyre's full range of skills going on here. So do you controlling like the drug trade or something? Uh-oh. Huge Coco buff. Yeah, if you notice they're not really running a big healer here. Looks like Gloria got the flag back. But that's interesting how Celion didn't take Gloria down until Gloria had her aura back. Which I guess makes sense, because maybe Gloria's a bit squishy. You don't really want her risking things over without buffing. What that was. Let me watch it again. Hmm. Must be a Hazna. Low at low. Later rank move or something. Interesting. So you see the good job that Coco's doing tanking there. Good stuff. I wonder if this is just a boss thing or if, uh. I 
Hui is her name. I keep calling her Hosna, my fault. Um, if Hui has an actual, like, uh... Actually follows up passively with the bird all the time like that on other people's attacks. That'd be pretty strong. There's the flag. So now Gloria's got a sweep that she can do for AoE damage, so that's cool. So yeah, Solan was clarifying to me after this. This is why a Ruiya takes over from Cole as best seeker DPS for the most part. Because if you had Cole here versus her, Cole would be constantly setting off the pigs until even with three or four turns until the pigs basically overwhelmed the map and that would be that. So it looks like, except for maybe Safiya, I think everyone has some form of AoE that they're capable of doing. Maybe not Coco, I'm not sure. Coco's taking a beating. <laughs> wow. Lot of deeps. Take that back. So you see how crazy this gets. Y'all should see the second video I'm gonna put up. There's even more dudes on the map than this. <laughs> it's looking like a little rave party or something. There it is. There's one. One Hui down. Gonna make some bacon. <laughs> Another one down. Wow, she can do it twice in a row. Didn't know that. That's that. That is a stage in Tower of Adversity, so I'm sure that's going to make you look at things a little bit differently for in-game PvP now, huh? So right here, what I was saying earlier, you start here. Okay, so on the left side, you're forming your teams, right? And then you go over to the right. One team goes up, one team goes down. And you try to score on all the stages. You see the uh, different scores on the stages that Celion could complete. Now, Celion was telling me level 3 is impossible, and Celion gets a very high score, which you will see later. But this is the actual tower, so you can see level 1, level 2, level 3. Level 3 is the big choke point for free-to-play right now, even someone as knowledgeable and as well-built, you know, plenty of time to farm, plenty of time to invest in different weapons and things and still can't crack power three so just craziness how that goes but we'll go ahead this is going to be the next map in the next video so i'll be uh be over there offering some commentary too i hope this opens your eyes up and uh just end game have 12 units that you're kind of thinking of okay i need these units we went over a lot of the really good units. You saw a bunch of them right there. You're going to see some more in a bit here. We'll end it here. I'll go ahead and start working on the next video. Yo, I'm Showtime Doctor, Showtime DR. 
you found my YouTube, hit like and subscribe for the content. Support your boy. I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.